Okay, I don't have much uh, upload space left this, this week, so I'm going to try to squeeze one more in. As you can see, I've uh, gone ahead and I've roughed out the one leg here, his left leg. It's pretty well roughed out completely. Now, if you notice the title of these, it's uh, Carving a Cowboy with Angora Chaps. So that's what this is going to be. And I'm trying a diff different style this time. Normally I would take the top of the chap, or the Angora hair, and move it up to here. But uh, if you can look, look at these here, I like this style here. I think I'll try that. And instead of having it uh, blossomed out at the top so much, like some of these are, let's see. Here's another sort of what style what I'm doing. But instead of having them blossomed out at the top so much, I'm going to uh, have them blossomed out at the bottom, like this one here. This is Jackson Sundown. He was a famous Indian rodeo cowboy. So anyway, what, what I've done now is I'm ready to start using, uh, start carving this one on this side, using this one here as a, as a pattern, or a go-by as they say, to match it up with this one here. Now I haven't glued this together, I just glued it together so I can draw on my, uh, you know, just rough details to, uh, to, to begin the process. Now someone asked me, uh, when I glue on pieces, you know, does the grain matter? Yes, it does. It matters a lot. I think when uh, the fellow asked the question, he, he thought the grain was running this way. Well, it's not. It's running this way, along with this up here. So, if you've ever busted apart a glue's, glued joint, you always notice that it never breaks on the glue. It only breaks on one side of the glue. The glue will be the strongest joint. So this matched up real well, and once it's painted, it'll never show. So when I started this side over here, the first thing I always do is draw on the bottom of the shoe. And that gives me the, the place to start. It gets rid of all this excess wood here. It makes the things a little bit easier to handle. And once I, got, once I have that done, then I can go ahead and start taking these up taking the, you know, sharp edges off. And it's, you know, considering the size of this piece, it's kind of a hard job, to, hard job to do. Not harder, not really hard, but I mean, it's more difficult to do than if you were working on a smaller figure. But in other ways, it's, a, it's easier. And I'm not gonna show you this because, you know, I showed you things like this so many times before, I really don't think it's necessary. Once we get down to this, uh, this uh, uh, point here, then we'll put it back together again and uh, start worrying about the smaller details. And I'll show you another trick you can do to help you along with that, okay? All right, so anyway, like I say, this isn't glued together, I just put it together so I could see, you know, that I get my uh, details correctly. Okay? All right, so let's just set that aside for a minute. Along with this. And uh, I thought to fill out the rest of the 10 minutes we've got left here, I'll show you on the eyes. Everybody has trouble with the eyes, but the eyes, you know, once you understand the eyes or the muscular part of the head, you're never going to have any trouble. Uh, one thing you should always remember, the skull underneath the skin always stays the same. It does not move its bone. It's rigid. About the only thing that can move on the skull is if the guy happens to open his mouth then the lower part moves while the upper part doesn't. So, on the skull, you have a large hole here for the eyeball, 
and the eye is a ball so it fits within that hole and then their skin covers over the top of it. So remembering that you're not going to have that much trouble. Now I've done started the one so now what I'm going to do is just start the other. And notice I keep my knife at a real shallow angle because I don't want to go in straight. Somebody just got an email. I think Judy's more popular than I am. Then you have to take your time doing this. And you want to get your knife really sharp before you work on these small details. Because the first thing I did before I started this was go over to the uh, polisher and polish my blade up. Make sure it was as sharp as it could be. When I'm working on these things. Slide a little deeper. Okay, we got that done. Now, I'm going to match up your eye, so I'm going to start here, go across here, down a little loop to indicate the roundness of the eye, and then bring it out flat again to uh, match the underlying bone or muscle. Okay, and this, this cut's going to be fairly straight in. One of the few times I do that. Just like that. And then it's just a matter of coming up and taking out that little chip. Now you will notice that this line here has a lot more curve to it than this line over here. Now is that a problem? No. To me, it only adds that much more character to the eye. So now what I'm going to do is come back over here. Well, she's getting all kinds of emails and I'm not getting any. This one starting here, cutting pretty straight in, but just at a slight curve, like that. And just like up above, I'll come down and take that chip out. Just like that.
Now here on the other side, we will do the same thing. Now back in the corners of the eye, I like to take out a little deeper chip because that just indicates more of the roundness of the eyeball. Here's a pencil line. So there we have those. Now what I like to do is the upper eyelid here always seems to overlap the lower eyelid so right here I'm going to bring this one in okay. and you'll see the difference just doing that legs. more rounded that made that eyeball look. I'll do the same thing here on the other side. Looking good. Now I put uh, a little muscle feature right here. And I'll do the same over here. Starting back here at the point, what I like to do is kind of curve this in like that. And take out that chip because again, that sort of matches the underlying part, but it leaves that little tag out there that makes it more interesting. So we'll just do that over here. He's looking pretty good. Thirteen, almost fourteen. Hmm. Thirteen minutes. Okay. Now remember when we laid it out, how we kind of twist, where we kind of put the carving at a slant when we lined it up with the wood. Okay. Here's where this uh, comes in handy. See here. Right on here on the top, I'm going to carve his eyelash. And by adding that little bit of curve, it allows you to just kind of spin that off of there. so much down here. We just indicate where that comes out. And then out here where it's even with the top we can put a little curve like that. 
And then, if we want, we can add a couple of laugh lines out of that. It's a little stiff, deep. Again, you know, that little change of the position of the plank when you laid it out really comes in handy. If you plan ahead. 16 minutes. 16 minutes, she says. Which we'll sort of wrap that up. So, anyway, that looks pretty good. And I'll go ahead and finish the other eye. And in the next, next video, if I get that worked out. I'll show you how to do these ears, okay? So, until then, I'll talk to you later.